Good evening, everyone. Nyama. Wanjari Woyawang Gulin. Gunganinu Bik Wenawap Darabandari. Nyariana Nyanga Bik Ban Ba Nyagu. Gagukal Nangit Bambuth Yalingbu Ba Gamaji. I acknowledge the Wanjari Woyawang people on whose land Darabin Council stands. I recognise their continuing connection to land, water and culture and pay my respect to Elders past, present and emerging. Tonight I would also like to acknowledge an Elder from another community. We have with us Regina De Silva from Timor-Leste, who is here in Australia on a study tour um, with the support of our neighbourhood houses and with this council and it's a pleasure to have her here to observe some of the proceedings this evening. We have apologies um, tonight from Councillor Lawrence and Councillor Messina, and membership of this meeting is as listed in the agenda. Councillors, are there any conflicts of interest to disclose this evening? Councillor Amir. Uh, yes, I'd like to disclose a conflict of in interest with items 8.2 and 10.8 uh, due to my other role as a federal public servant. Thank you, Councillor Amir, so noted. I'd like to put in a interest regarding a notice of motion regarding the Preston Bull Ants that I'll be speaking on. Swa Park, so that's item 10.4. Yes. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Um, that brings us to confirmation of the minutes of the previous council meeting. That's moved by Councillor Lesurf, seconded by Councillor McCarthy. All those in favour? That motion is carried. Thank you. That now brings us to question time. Um, before I move into question time, I would like to remind all councillors and members of the gallery of my expectations in regards to our behaviour this evening. I'd like to remind all councillors of our obligations under the Councillor Code of Conduct. At Darabin, we pride ourselves on being a progressive and contemporary council. In the interests of demonstrating exemplary leadership, I have high expectations that we will be professional in our conduct throughout the evening and respectful in the debate. It is important for both councillors and the community to remember that our council chamber is both a workplace and a public space, and that we have an obligation to ensure that working environments and public forums are safe for everyone, both emotionally as well as physically. I want to be clear that I won't tolerate any form of personal acrimony or insult, grandstanding or yelling, nor will I put up with talking over the top of one another, any use of unreasonable or impolite language or interjections from the gallery. We have a lot to get through, um, so councillors, I will ask as usual that you direct your questions and comments through me as the chair, and I'll endeavour to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to speak. Moving to question time, I'll start with uh, questions submitted online, but before I do, I would like to remind the gallery that if you are here to ask a question, um, you must approach the lectern and clearly state your name. If you can't approach the lectern, um, an officer will come to you with the microphone, and the reason we use the microphone is to ensure that all people who are watching online are able to get really good quality sound. Um, I will also ask that people direct any questions to myself as the Mayor, and that questions are limited to two, as it gives everybody the opportunity to speak. So I'll move to the question that was submitted um, prior to the meeting. It relates to a petition that was circulated online, and the question is, Will you make the last two staff survey questions and answers available for review to residents, and if not, why not? This is a question from Ms Diana Pace. Um, thank you for this question. Um, staff surveys are internal operational matters. Councillors don't see such surveys or have access to them. As an internal operational item, a staff survey would not be made available to the public, and I'm not aware of any council in which a staff survey has been made um, available to the public. Thank you for that question, um, Diana. There are no further questions received online. I'm wondering if um, there are any questions from members of the gallery. Keith. Good evening, Mayor Rennie and everyone else. Um, my question tonight is after a conversation with Susan um, Mayor Rennie um, a few weeks ago, I told her the three things I had on my mind that was really giving me the irrits. 
the dirty toilets in Edward Street next to the police station, which are not just dirty, they're putrid, and they should be condemned. Um, that's my opinion. Um, and I did a survey over them several weeks. I go keep going at regular times and having a look, different days, and they don't look any better. The floor's always wet, as the public's been telling me, and which makes it, it's a greeny tile after continuous lot of water. It's just like slimy. It looks terrible. I first come to my attention after my wife had to, unfortunately, part to go in there. And she put her bag down and then with horror, run out. I reported it and the lady at the desk said, she, well, um, 48 hours would be all right. So I went in there to look at it myself for the first time. I was really horrified and for a bloke to say it was awful, it's awful. And it's no better now than when I spoke to Mayor Ennie. And the uh, beautification in Banff Street, which is appalling, it's all full of weeds, the fence is falling down. I got on my phone, I'm not hep with producing them, but I can show you. And so as well, I could show you what the toilet looks like. And they are not a credit to anyone. And they're um, all rubbish falling in it because sometimes so, the recycle bin doesn't get can, emptied there. I need, can I just ask you, um, I hear that issue and I've heard the issue about the dirty toilets. I do need you to ask your question. My question is, when the blooming hell are they going to get some proper attention or condemn them? Especially um, the toilets. Um, because if it was in a workplace, under the Health and Safety Act, you'd be... Stop work, stop work would happen. Um, thank you for that question, yeah. Keith. And I, I did follow up on the toilets, and I'm disappointed, as you are, obviously, that yeah. the situation, if the situation hasn't been improved. Uh, I will ensure that council officers mm. immediately look into that and work out what needs to occur so that those toilets are in a state... One of them used. things did get done, the rubbish outside the dole hub, which was okay. there for weeks. I thought the simplest one got done, but the more important ones, health-wise, wasn't. Okay. Um, thank you, Keith. I'm yeah. glad to hear that the rubbish got dealt with, but we'll also look into the Bam yeah. Street issue. And I'll be looking at it. And thank you. Also, that other toilet that I told you on the corner of Broadway and High Street, I got within, say, from here to you, away from it, and I could smell it. Okay. They, they don't know what disinfectant is, I'm sure. Okay. Um, thank you, Keith, for drawing those important issues to our attention. I will um, ensure once again that officers follow up and hopefully that will be more effective. Are there any further questions from members of the gallery? No. We'll move now into petitions. There are... Oh, yes, Councillor Williams, do you have a petition? Yep. I have a petition here signed by 17 residents. Um, the petition says that we, the undersigned residents, traders and shoppers, call on Darabin Council to remove these rubbish traps in Banff Street and restore our car spaces so that we can shop locally without these ugly hazards. Um, pass that on. Thank you. And um, Councillor Williams, I'll just check your seeking that the petition be referred to the CEO. So, um, Councillor Williams has moved that that petition be referred to the CEO. That's seconded by Councillor Greco. All those in favour? That motion is carried. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Are there any further petitions? No. So, we'll move into urgent business. There is one urgent business item. Um, I was just going to ask Ms Wilkinson... Oh, we'll ask councillors if there are any questions in relation to that business item before we move it. Uh, Councillor Greco. Yeah, I have a question. Um, given the situation is getting serious, more serious and serious by the day, I just wonder whether one million dollars is sufficient. Um, Ms. Wilkinson. Uh, through you, Mayor Rennie. Thank you for the question, Councillor Greco. Um, the higher the limit, the more work we can progress. Quite frankly. Um, the intent is that it only be used in the most extreme of circumstances, so it really is up to council to determine an amount. Um, my current delegation is $500,000, so uh, to be honest, I didn't want to 
take it too far, but um, if council was of a mind to increase that, that would be fine. Um, thank you for that question, Councillor Greco. Are there further questions? Um, Councillor O'Meara. Uh, through you, Mayor Rennie, um, what would what projects or um, services or circumstances would be outside the scope of the current one million delegation limit, or the proposed one million delegation proposed yeah. limit? Yeah. Um, Ms. Wilkinson, uh, thank you for the question. Um, through you, Mayor Rennie. Um, so, um, uh, large scale contracts. So beyond one million. Um, that would allow sort of parks and those kinds of works to continue. It is a bit contingent on the availability of, the ongoing availability of workers and the ongoing availability of equipment and construction materials, which are actually becoming a little bit limited. Um, but you could, um, for a million dollars, you're able to keep progressing parks. There may be some service contracts that actually exceed that value. Um, we have a large mechanical services contract that's due to come up to council at the next meeting, um, which I think exceeds that, but I might just refer to Mr Hewitt if that's okay. Certainly, Mr Hewitt. Uh, through you, Mayor Reddy. Some of the contracts that the council may be asked to consider in the next few months include some large construction contracts. Uh, BT Connor Reserve Pavilion is one, for example. We've got um, Council's recycling contract is due to expire in about uh, September, I think, and we hope to come to you in June or July or August. Uh, that will be many millions of dollars. So uh, there's a couple that immediately come to mind. Uh, there may be others as well. Thank you, Mr Hewitt. Councillor O'Meara. Uh, Recognising that this is an unprecedented circumstance, um, in the occurrence that Council was not able to meet, uh, would it be anticipated that the state government would have the power to allow CEOs to continue with work uh, within uh, current budgets and plans? Uh, Ms Wilkinson. <coughs> Through you, Mayor Rennie, thank you for the question, Councillor Amir. Um, that's not known. It would require... So at the moment what the Act requires is a financial delegation to be provided. So the Act and Council's delegation to individual CEOs... Um, uh, is, pro is expected. Uh, there are emergency provisions that allow for... Um, uh, so when an emergency is declared, as was done today, it means that you can actually make quicker procurement decisions, but still within delegation. So in order to um, do more than $500,000, Council would need to change the delegation. Further questions, Councillors? Is is there a motion? Do, just, uh, oh. If I can just check, um, Ed, do we need to admit this onto the agenda, or is it, has it already been admitted onto the agenda? Um, thank you. Good point, Councillor McCarthy. So we'll seek a motion from someone. Um, it's moved by Councillor McCarthy, seconded by Councillor Sir. So this is a motion to admit this as urgent business onto the agenda. All those in favour? That item is admitted. Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. Um, so are there further questions now on the item? No, is there a motion? Councillor Newton. Thank you, Mayor Rennie. I'm happy to move the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Newton. Is there a second? Uh, Councillor Williams, thank you. Uh, Councillor Newton. Thank you, Mayor Rennie. This is obviously a daily changing situation and I think with a state of emergency being declared today, this will allow us to continue with the business that we need to do in the event of a changing situation. So I support this. Thank you, Councillor Newton. Councillor Williams. Well, we're looking at a situation that I guess none of us have seen in our lifetime and hopefully we'll never see it again. But uh, allowing this uh, availability for cancel and um, our CEO to act on on issues when they arise because we have no idea what those issues may be, but it allows that um, flexibility that if anything does come up that they can be acted on uh, without uh, obviously the trepidation or uh, calling councillors to try and bring in an urgent uh, meeting. So it's important that um, we continue because we are at another level of governance uh, 
here at Darabin and um, hopefully that uh, this will pass us as soon as possible, but um, it has great, great fears that um, it might be ongoing for many, many months to come. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Are there any further speakers? There being none, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? That motion is carried unanimously. Thank you, councillors. We'll now move to consideration of reports, starting with item 8.1. We have a submission in relation to 8.1, um, but we'll have an opportunity perhaps to hear from the officers first or ask any questions. Or do we do the submission first? Okay, we're actually going to hear from the submitters first, so you may, may stay there, but I would like to invite the submitter, um, George Karambas, to come up and make a submission to this item. Welcome, Mr Karambas. Testing, testing, there we go. That's fantastic, thank you. Okay. Um, I'd like to submit to the council um, in relation to this item that uh, food consumption plays a big part in environmental and health impacts. It's highlighted in the council's um, report, Darabin Climate Emergency Plan, that, um, and there's a, a pretty detailed table there which I've pulled off the, from the report. Um, detailing that, in particular, beef, cheese and fish play a big part in the environmental impacts that are occurring, as well, on, as, well as the health impacts to people. So I'd like to submit to the Council that more can be done to highlight these issues and make you know, community members more aware of the choices that they're making when they're going out and purchasing uh, food for consumption. Um, in particular, I'd like to submit that, um, you know, a pamphlet similar to this in relation to food waste recycling could be developed um, to highlight um, tables like um, the food pyramid and the environmental pyramid. Also highlighting um, the impacts that our choices have when we do go and buy um, food products and animal products um, and trying to reduce our consumption of um, animal, food and animal products in, um, across the board, whether we're buying clothing or buying food or whatever it may be. I'd also like to submit that within the community news, there is a section on food waste recycling lands in Darabin. So we're already talking about how to best recycle the food that we do consume. So I'd like to also um, submit that we highlight the impact within an article like this that food choices make to the environment and to the um, public as well. So I think that pretty much sums it up. Great. Thank you very much for making that submission, Mr Carabas. Um, no doubt it will give councillors some food for thought. And, <laughs> and um, equally, I would um, recommend that you look out for opportunities to make a similar contribution to when um, planning for the council plan comes up, because it's certainly something we could think about um, in work going forward. So okay. thank you for coming thank you. tonight. Thank you for the Hope opportunity. Hope you stay for debate on the item. You are welcome to leave at any stage in the meeting also. Okay. Thank you. Um, councillors, I'll now invite you to ask any questions of the officers prior to any debate on this item. If there are no questions of officers, I'll ask if anyone has a motion. Councillor Newton. I'd like to move the officers' recommendation, recommendation as on the screen. Thank you, Councillor Newton. Is there a seconder? Councillor McCarthy. Thank you, Councillor Newton. Thank you, Mayor Rennie. So, if you read a report like this, it's really incredible, all the things that Council plan to do, all the things that we're getting there towards and all the things that we're working towards. Uh, so, some of the things that I'm really excited to see on track are that we are on track to double the amount of solar power in Darabin and we've got another round of solar savers coming up later tonight. Uh, we've also working on making sure public transport is accessible and available for people. So we've been working with the level crossing removal on that. We've had a climate emergency ambassadors dinner and 
something that I'm quite excited about after going to a, ra a road safety forum on Friday is that we've also completed the installation of 40 kilometre speed limits in three locations across Darabin. And in terms of our operating, operating performance, there's a really, really good outline here of where we are at um, and what's happening. So, for example, uh, we know that the forecast adjusted underlying surplus is 2.49 million, which is 2.46 million less than budget, but we explain why. Um, and we can also see that capital works are well on the way, and we can see that even though we are... Uh, let's see. So we've got, we're 0.7 million less than the adopted budget, but there's reasons for that and we're moving ahead, making sure that we have everything done. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Newton. Councillor McCarthy. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you also to our submitter this evening. Um, great contribution and I think certainly in the spirit of what this uh, council plan and our annual plan both speak to, which is how we can not only do the work in-house within the organisation, but also support our community to make the necessary transitions um, that are part of our action on the climate emergency. Um, Councillor Newton has already mentioned the success of uh, now, as of October last year, already meeting our council level, sorry, our, our municipal level target of doubling the amount of solar in Darabin. It is now exceeded 36 megawatts, which is um, I believe unprecedented uh, for a, a, metro a metropolitan area like Darabin to achieve that level of take up uh, in the community in such a short space of time and the Solar Savers program has been critical to that with some 450 odd installations including 16 business installations that have occurred in the previous reporting period. Um, I'd also just note that um, there's been some action that's been undertaken which I think if you consider what our community um, may face over coming months um, where people will uh, may, may be having to find other ways to um, enjoy our community. Um, in fact, um, opportunities potentially to spend more time in, uh, in our lovely green spaces. Um, uh, then you'd be pleased to know that along the Darabin Creek, um, Darabin Council coordinated other municipalities to install 51 new directional signs along Darabin Creek to really support people's journey along that fantastic natural asset. Um, there are a range of achievements here, but I want to just make the point to say that this work um, this work is uh, significant in, in its scale and scope in a whole range of areas. It doesn't happen without the dedicated work of both our council staff, um, our volunteers who are involved in community advisory committees, and the many residents and businesses who actually can participate and contribute to the programs and opportunities that are here. So I want to say a huge thank you for all their efforts uh, in the previous period. Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. Are there any further speakers? Councillor Gweco. And thank you, Mayor Rennie. Um, I was just in the process of preparing an, amend uh, an amendment, an additional point, and um, given that this is the second quarter action, um, that um, in relation to the third quarter, that we, if we could receive uh, a, a report on the impact of the um, coronavirus in relation to um, some of our action plans and also some of our performance um, targets and also some of our the budgetary implications of that because I think it's an important part okay, of, of so the report. So we won't I won't get into the debate, but you're proposing an amendment that there be a third point, which is to get a report on the yeah, impact. Yeah. Okay. In relation to the third, um, uh, in relation to the third quarter. Okay. Um, thank you for that amendment, Councillor Greco. We'll just try and make sure that the officers have some words so that we can get it on the screen. And once we have some words on the screen. Um, Mr. Mann, are you able to propose or get some words to the officers that they might include? Certainly through you, Madam Mayor. Um, the proposed words would be that a uh, report on the impact of the coronavirus on the implementation of the council plan be incorporated into the third quarter. Is that appropriate? Third um, thank you for that, Mr. Mann. We'll see if we can get those words. Councillors, we will take the time to make sure we have that on the screen before I um, get a sense from the mover and the seconder whether you wish to um, accept that amendment. There is also an opportunity, once that amendment's on the screen, to ask Ms Wilkinson or the officers at the front um, 
any questions in relation to the proposed amendment. Okay, um, Councillor Greco, some words have come up on the screen. Can you just check that um, it's the form of words Mr Mann has recommended? Um, is that acceptable? So um, I'll ask... Can I just? I heard uh, that a um, that the qu the quarter three progress report include a yeah. analysis of the yeah. Okay. Thank you. We will take our time to make sure that we get this right. Um, councillors, this is a reminder that it is best, preferable if anyone else has any amendments throughout the course of the evening, if they could be clearly and legibly written down in handwriting if you haven't had an opportunity to provide them ahead of time so that we don't experience this hold up again. So we'll take item 8.2 off the screen if we could and return to item 8.1. <coughs>
Okay, Councillor Gweco, are you happy with the form of words? And now I'll ask the mover and the second. I think we are aware of what is intended, whether they accept that. Happy to accept. And the seconder, happy to accept. Um, thank you, Councillor Gweco. That's now the substantive motion. Can I speak? Uh... Um, yes, Councillor Gweco. Just very quickly, I, I won't go through uh, the other points that have been raised by councillors, but just in relation to this additional point, we're going to go through a critical few months, and um, and it's only fair, I think, that um, that um, given that our um, uh, our reports are public reports, that we provide as, as much information as possible, and we're we are transparent as possible, so that we're accountable for for our actions, and at the same time taking into account. And this very unpredictable and volatile time that we're going through, so that in the third quarter we could actually then set, start to separate um, what we achieved as a result of our direct um, um, efforts, but also what perhaps could not be achieved as a result of the uh, coronavirus uh, impacted on our city. Thank you, Councillor Gweco. Are there any further speakers? No, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? That motion is carried. That brings us to item 8.2. Okay, we'll just get the officers and before we move into any debate. Um, I need to declare again? Uh, yes. I'd like to declare that I have a conflict of interest due to a conflicting duty as a federal public servant on this item. Um, thank you, Councillor Amir. We'll just wait for you to leave the chamber. Um, councillors, does anyone have any questions of Ms Bishop prior to debate on this item? Or Mr Mann? No, there are no questions, so I'll seek a motion. Um, Councillor McCarthy? Uh, sorry, Mayor, the, um, the motion that's listed on screen is not the same as in the agenda. Um, I believe we have five, five um, items that we were presented with. So if we could have them considered before I move. Mr Mann. Through you, Mayor Rennie. Um, the report before you was, uh, when it was circulated, did not include the, the three motions that have been t um, circulated. Uh, and we have copies of those on, on the screen. The f further two motions were motions that the City of Moreland were considering. Um, and as the report explains, council can support those motions on the floor of the assembly uh, at, the conf at the conference or the assembly. Um, so uh, what was circulated to councillors um, on Friday were the three motions which were in relation to um, the treatment of uh, asylum seekers, uh, the support for a charter of human rights and a motion regarding the strengthening of um, product stewardship. And the, those words for those three motions um, are available on the screen. Thank you. I can see that um, they've been They're on through. different pages they're here. They're on screen, and that's probably my... I want yep. to be clear on what we're moving. Um, one can motion, I, One... Can I just be clear yep. that, yes, that it is one combined motion that we'd be moving? So it's that council resolved to submit the following motions, and yep. then... Yep. Yep. Yes. And just if I can just get clarity just off something that Mr Mann said then, um, that we don't need to reference the Moreland City Council motions, but we may, we may say that we endorse those, if that's correct? They can be endorsed on the floor of the um, uh, assembly. That, sorry, they can be endorsed on the floor, but can Council also... Yes. yes. Say so, that we, yep. Yep. Um, then I would ask that we also... Um, refer to them in the motion. Yep. Okay. So, Councillor McCarthy is moving effectively a motion that includes all the words on those screens in addition to a point that Council formally notes its endorsement for the two motions provided by Moreland City Council. That's correct. As long as councillors are aware, there's a five motions then that we're actually yep. supporting. Okay.
So we'll make that dot point two not a sub point five. Uh, I think the words are okay, but it just needs to be formatted differently. On the basis that I think the words are probably... Is that Councillor McCarthy? That's, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I'll seek a seconder for that motion. Just before you do, could I ask a question just to clarify something? Certainly, yeah. Councillor Greco. Um, if that's the motion, if I've understood correctly, it doesn't pick up on the other two points in relation to asylum, in relation to refugees and also the uh, National Charter of Human Rights. Uh, Councillor Greco, it's not all on the one page, but they are included, so I'll just get the officers to flip onto the other two pages so Councillor Greco can see that they are part of what we're moving. So, Councillor Greco, that's in relation to the asylum seekers. And then we'll get the other one in relation to the human rights. Oh, I'm happy to second. The human rights one was there, we'll get that. So, Councillor Greco. And that's in relation to the Charter of Human Rights. So they're all there, um, Councillor Greco. Apologies for the delay. I think it is absolutely vital for the purposes of good governance that we all um, have absolute confidence on what it is we're debating. So Councillor McCarthy, over to you as the mover. Um, thank you, Mayor, and, and thank you also, Councillor Greco. Um, so I'll, I'll keep this brief uh, just to say that um, each of the motions that's presented before us for endorsement and submission to the National General Assembly of Local Government are consistent with um, existing council policy positions or certainly build on them um, and um, are well directed and well articulated and well within the remit of the Australian Local Governance Association to take action. Um, I would note that in relation to each of these, they are in, in most cases asking the Australian Local Governance Association to advocate to the federal government and, uh, in some cases, other agencies um, to make changes that actually have a material impact on the lives of people here in Australia. In the case of the, um, the item in relation to people with disabilities um, and accessibility with building codes, that is something, of course, which we know in this city has a direct impact <coughs> in terms of the building stock that we see. Um, I don't have an extraordinary amount of confidence that, uh, that, the, that these calls for advocacy um, necessarily always lead to action. And I'd say that because we have put forward successful motions through ALGA and other forums before. It is actually up to that body to, to take that fight and be strategic in its advocacy, and I sincerely hope that is the case. Um, because the, we do have a seat at the table at COAG, uh, the Council of Australian Governments, and that is um, through ALGA, and that is the opportunity here to really put this case if it's not being put by state and territory governments. So I support the five motions as listed. Um, the one relating to the prohibition of nuclear weapons, whilst it may seem like an, a national um, issue, is something which has obviously a very local context. Um, likewise, the issue around um, refugee advocacy uh, and the, obviously the policy position there is something that is dear to the hearts of many in our city. So I'll end it there, and uh, if other councillors wish to speak to the particular items, um, then I'd, I'd be pleased to hear their support. Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. Councillor Greco. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Reddy. I'll, I'll just say a few points. One is that um, these um, three items are all clearly um, national items, and that's why we're putting them forward 
to the um, ALGA so that they can lobby uh, the federal government. In regards to the one that I'm particularly keen on is in regards to the refugees and what we see is happening across the country, like we've seen here in Darabin, where the federal government is basically locking up um, refugees within our suburbs. And it's not only affecting Darabin, but I understand it's affecting other, uh, other suburbs across, across the country. So it's important that then the um, ALGA actually deals with this issue. It's also important that we deal with this issue because we know that this, uh, the, the locking up of refugees is costing the government billions of dollars. In the time that we're going to go through, in the next six months or so, uh, we need to find every penny that we can get. And um, it just makes just not only humanitarian sense but also uh, financial sense to um, release these people in the, in the, into the community and also use that money for other, uh, for other purposes across the country. So um, I'm just hoping that the... The, uh, the ALGA will actually uh, push these issues, not look at them um, as they have in the past, but look at them from a new lens of the particular situation that we're going through now. Thank you, Councillor Greco. Are there any further speakers? I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? That motion is carried unanimously. Thank you, councillors. That brings us to item 8.3, proposed discontinuance of the sale of a road rear to 182 and 186 High Street. Thank you. I'll just ask councillors if there are any questions of the officers in this case. Uh, there being no questions, I'll ask if there's a motion. Uh, that was moved by Councillor Lesurf, seconded by Councillor McCarthy. Councillor Lesurf. Uh, this motion is to commence the statutory um, process to proceed to discontinue a, a road that's adjoining um, 182 to 186 High Street and 1 Butler Street. We were contacted by the owners in 2018 who were interested in purchasing um, that that uh, property and we've undertaken some preliminary investigations since that time to assess whether this would be appropriate um, to discontinue and sell this pa um, parcel of land. Um, and so now we're moving um, into that process to kick off the statutory process. Um, what that means from here is that we'll be giving um, public notice um, under the various sections of the Act um, to discontinue um, the road. And so we'll be advertising that um, publicly through newspapers and on our website to let the public know that that's our intention. Um, and then we'll uh, proceed from there. Thank you, Councillor Lesurf. Councillor McCarthy. I have nothing to add. Thank you. Are there any further speakers? No, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? That motion is carried. Um, that brings us to item 8.4, Council Meeting Governance Rules. We'll just ask the officers to come forward and see if there are any questions. Ms Bishop? Mr Mann, sure. Or you can stay there. Okay. Um, councillors, are there any questions of Ms Bishop or Mr Mann? No, there being no questions, is there a motion? Councillor Amir? Uh, I'd like to move the motion from the agenda with a small amendment that I believe will be up on the screen. Yep, that's correct. Um, thank you. So this is the motion that Councillor Amir has moved. Is there a seconder for that? Give me a second. Councillor Lesurf, thank you. For those who are reading it, it's the words in bold at the end which Councillor Amir has added to the officer recommendation. Is that correct, Councillor Amir? Yep. Okay. Um, Councillor Amir, over to you. Uh, thanks, Mayor Rennie. Um, so what we're adopting tonight is the governance local laws, which sets out the rules for these meetings here, as well as the election of the mayor and the deputy mayor. In uh, December last year, we adopted a uh, draft local governance laws, which were largely similar to those previously, but with uh, more detail added to um, uh, allow for some of the gaps that had been identified in the last um, year or two. Uh, it's important that we give careful consideration to these laws because they impact on how the meeting happens and how the public sees us as councillors and we want to make sure that we've got a fair and open and democratic process, um, of course, balanced with maintaining um, order and getting through the business of the day. So the addition that um, I've added is under reasons for rejection of a notice of motion to say uh, that a notice of motion should be rejected if it's... Uh, 
Oh, actually, I did say includes. Sorry, I'm misleading a false statement. Anyway, nonetheless, we can adjust that later. Um, this is consistent with um, section 53 around statements made in the chamber, um, and it uh, councillors can call upon others if a councillor makes a statement that is false or misleading. And I think it's absolutely um, within community expectation that if councillors um, can be called up on saying something in this chamber uh, that others believe is misleading or false, that when it comes to written statements um, in the agenda, particularly, for example, in this case, the notice of motion, that there should be, if anything, a higher standard um, to which those things are held. They, these documents are formal public documents. They are um, kept on record for a long time. We want to make sure that uh, the, what's being put forward starts from um, where we're at and then, of course, each notice of motion can be debated on its merits and considered. Um, so these lo local um, laws, if adopted tonight, will then carry into the next council term. I'm sure it'll be interesting um, for councillors and officers and the public to um, see how the impacts of some of the changes that were introduced into the dr uh, previous draft, potentially to be adopted tonight, um, may impact on the way these meetings are carried out. Hopefully it will be an improvement to have a smoother meeting process, more in line with um, what we're looking for. And uh, if not, there'll be an opportunity for the next council to make further changes to uh, improve the laws further. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Amir. Um, I'm just going to ask a quick question of Mr Mann. Mr Mann, in the course of moving that motion, Councillor Amir indicated that she had meant for it to say it includes a misleading or false statement rather than it is a misleading or false statement. Um, given no, that's in the that realm of semantics, um, are we able to swap the word is for includes um, as a procedural fi quick fix or do we have to do that by seeking an amendment? An amendment. I'm just going to ask whether we can do it without an amendment. Through you, Mayor Rennie. Um, I think, uh, think Councillor Amir could, could slightly alter that word um, without an amendment. So it includes... OK, thank you. I, I trust that the seconder is happy with that. Can I just get confirmation? The second... Yeah, OK. Um, thank you. So um, over to you, Councillor Lesurf. Um Sorry, I was still trying to find my notes. Um, uh, just, I guess, to add um, to Councillor Amir's comments, um, I think that we've made some real improvements to um, from, from where the existing government's local law is to what we're proposing to adopt tonight, particularly, um, I guess, making it very clear about what the process of the election of the mayor is. Um, and there has also been um, some changes in terms of transparency around uh, recording votes. Um, so all, all votes are recorded uh, except for procedural motions. And um, I think it has taken some of the ambiguity out of some of the, um, the, the some of the uh, clauses in the current local law because um, they can be left to interpretation sometimes. And I think that this is much cleaner and easier to understand um, and more contemporary. Um, disappointingly, though, uh, we didn't receive any submissions when we put it out to public exhibition. Um, and I know that there have been some members of our community that do take an interest in the local law. Um, and so they have missed their opportunity to, I guess, input into and influence um, the governance local law for the, the next year um, or so. Um, it will need to be reviewed, of course, regularly, um, and the new council will um, have the opportunity to do that. But I am looking forward to the year ahead under this new local law, testing it out and testing some of the, the things that we've changed as well. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Lesurf. Are there any further speakers? Councillor Greco. Um, thank you, Mary. I have a, an amendment that I'd like to move. Um, thank you. We'll get your amendment up on the screen. <coughs> Um, thank you, Councillor Greco. If you could just look at this and in, um, confirm that this is the amendment as you intended. So, so that people are clear, um, apparently the way it's come up is that the parts that are involved are the what's in currently in the in the policy. 
and, and they've been struck out. And then what's in normal font is actually what the, what the new wording would be. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. It's, uh, sort of track changes. Thank you. Um, is there a seconder for Councillor Greco's amendment? That's um, seconded by Councillor Williams. Um, I might just say I'm going to propose um, that we debate this as one but vote on the five components separately if you're amenable to that, Councillor Greco. Okay. Um, so over to you, Councillor Greco. Okay, do you want me to speak on all of them or...? Yes, okay. we're okay. going to debate once. Uh, okay, just very quickly because I've only got uh, two minutes, is that uh, the basis behind the, this amendment is to look at the, the governance rules, rules from a... Uh, from a resident's perspective, that is from a community's perspective. I feel that the governance rules at the moment actually restrict the, um, if you like, the, the, uh, you know, the democratic rights of, uh, of the community to have access to be access to, um, to come to council and put their questions in a very easy and accessible way. So what my um, um, motions do, what my motion my amendment does is that basically in relation to submissions and in relation to questions is to continue the same practice that we have now. As we saw tonight, if somebody comes in at six o'clock and wants to ask a question, um, that they can do that or make a submission that they can do that rather than excluding them if they don't put their question in before um, 12, 12 noon on that day. Why this is important? Because it could be discriminatory. That is, if somebody whose first language is not English or somebody who doesn't speak English well or is not uh, overly articulate and does not want to put their questions in writing before noon, they could come here, put their hand up, um, ask their questions, fire their question away. If we can't answer the question, we take the question on notice and we respond back to it. The, the other two parts that... Um, the other parts of my... Um, uh, amendment go to the um, uh, petitions. We've noticed that every time a petition is lodged, um, the community doesn't really get a chance to actually at least give us a short submission in relation to what the, submi what the petition is about. So I'm suggesting that when a submission is lodged, uh, rather than just looking at it bureaucratically, the way that we've currently done, the way we currently did, the way we did it tonight, and we've been doing it in the past, is to give the, um, the petitioners an opportunity to, to make a two-minute submission like a normal submission that gives some content to the um, to the petition that's particularly that's been tabled, which helps the officers also helps other councils to understand where that where, is, where that's coming from, and then finally, and this is I think it's an important point that we, what what has been suggested here that we keep the um, uh, keep it on Thanks, on video. I, I need if I can just get ten seconds extension that rather than um, a two years that where we keep our. Uh, the, is to keep it for four years to go over the term of, of, of a council, because I think that would be more appropriate. Thank you, Councillor Greco. Councillor Williams. I had a valid point in reference to involving our community and residents as, as much as possible, especially those from a, an older generation who may not have computers or the internet. Um, I know that there's one in particular who's in our gallery tonight, so thank you, who comes here on a week to week and struggles, but he doesn't have the internet, um, but has been coming to council meetings for over 50 years. So um, it would be a bit of a disgrace that we, um, I guess, uh, we cut a whole heap of people from our community in doing uh, question and public time instead of they have to come in formally to hand in their questions. At least they can come in on the night and, and submit their questions. Uh, I think it's also important that um, it would be nice to see how we can extend that period in reference to webcast, um, but I'm not sure what cap Council's capability in reference to that on holding such information. That was all. Um, thank you, Councillor Williams. Are there any further speakers to the amendment? Was I able to ask a question? Um, debate has begun, so... Um, That's the new local law. That is the new local <laughs> law. So... Um, Yes, under the existing local law, you can ask a question. Um, under the uh, local law as proposed um, in the agenda this evening, does the local law prevent members of the public from uh, making speak, asking a question uh, relating to a petition or a notice of motion as part of public question time, where the question relates to the same topic content as a petition or notice of motion to come? Mr. Mann. Through you, Mayor. Without going to that section, um, 
I, I think you are correct. With it, but without going back to it and, and reading it clearly, I, I can't give a definitive answer, but I, I believe you are correct. That you can. Thank you. Uh, you can or you can't? So can I repeat, First Councillor, sir? Yep. Um, my question was, can a member of the public ask a question during the general question time at the commencement of the meeting for which the topic or content is related to or similar to a petition or notice of motion that is on the agenda for that same meeting? And through you, Mayor Rennie, my answer is, is I believe, yes, you can. Okay, thank you for that question. Thank you for the answer. Um, Councillor McCarthy. Um, thanks, Mayor. Look, my question's uh, more grammatical rather than substantive at this stage. We've just seen these proposed amendments and I appreciate um, councillors have the right to bring amendments in that way and that's fine. Um, I would just like to understand the, because the wording is a little bit difficult to read with the bold um, and the, the, the phrasing of and or, um, before we consider these, can I just get just some uh, indication as to whether that is clear and um, and able to be implemented as local law in the way that it's framed at the moment, or phrased at the moment, I should say. So that's in relation to the third so point? Point three, and uh, I think also point four, um, both uses that and or, which I don't think is actually phrasing that is actually consistent with how governance local laws are written. So I would ask, even if we need to take a five minute recess, I don't wish to vote on something if the wording is not correct, because once we vote on this, it becomes local law. Okay, thank you, Councillor McCarthy, for that question. Um, Mr Mann, I'll seek your advice on that, please. Through you, Mayor Rennie. Um, up, sorry, through you, Mayor Rennie. Um, I think... I, I, I'd be reluctant to give a definitive answer on the basis of that question um, without reading it and uh, carefully considering what those amendments mean. Councillor Surf. Okay, I was going to speak to the motion. I, although I am sure how I'm going to vote now because of Councillor McCarthy's question. Um, I do agree with um, the... Uh, two, three and four. In terms of three and four and, and allowing um, the members of the public to make submissions and questions um, if they're in attendance to the meeting, that is kind of the current practice um, of this council, but it is not actually permitted through the local law as it is written today. And I think that by um, adopting the intent um, of this amendment that we would actually just be aligning the governance local law with our current practice, and I think that that would be a good thing. Um, in terms of allowing members of the public to make a submission to a notice of motion or, or to a petition, I am, um, I am, I guess, more uncomfortable about about that. And I guess it, go, it goes to the heart of the intent of the council meeting. Um, in is a decision making forum that we do want to be open and accessible to the public, and we do want to be informed by what the public think. Um, but there is time outside of a council meeting to do some of that work, and I think that we need to make sure that um, that the the meeting re remains orderly and that do it that does not drag on for long hours, because I think that long council meetings actually lead to bad decision making when people are tired. Um, <laughs> So in terms of making a submission to a petition, I think that the appropriate time for, the, for a person to be heard on that matter is through the petition, but also when council considers the response of the organisation to the petition, which is generally what happens when we receive a petition. So there is an opportunity for the community to make a submission in this chamber about that, that, that issue that they care about. In terms of um, a submission to notices of motion, um, Notices of motion, I guess, um, should be exceptional items that um, that don't appear much on the agenda, in my opinion, because they um, they generally um, uh, are taking or distracting from the business of council. Um, a lot of the time, I'm very pleased that the new local law actually um, 
focuses the attention on what a notice of motion should be doing, which is exploratory and not directive, um, and it shouldn't should be within the existing council plan. And so, I mean, I just I just don't think Thank that, you, that's time. that that's um, making submissions of notices of motion is the is the right way, and that if people are passionate about notices of motion, they can contact councillors before time. the meeting. Thank you, Councillor Lesurf. Are there any further speakers on the amendment? It's a, more of a procedural question, Mayor. Um, I feel uncomfortable about the way, I, whilst I agree with everything that Councillor Lesurf has said, I feel uncomfortable about the way in which points three and four have been written um, and don't feel that, even though I support the spirit of them, I don't think that the language is clear enough to be inserted in the local law at this stage. And I'd like to ask whether Council might have a five-minute um, recess so that our governance... Um, uh, officer can actually look at the wording and ensure that it is consistent with local law so we can consider it properly. Um, I'll take that as a procedural motion requesting a five minute adjournment. Um, do I have to do that? Um, is there a seconder for that? Um, seconded by Councillor Lesurf. All those in favour? Okay. Um, we have adjourned the meeting for five minutes. We will start again at 7.08 and see if we can resolve that issue. <laughs>